that we play viewers. This won't be a very long scope because there's not much to see except for this boat that's been behind me all day. Um, so if you ever wonder what my boat look, looks like, my boat's blue and theirs is white and we're the same kind otherwise, which also means we go at the same speed. And I had a I had a mishap today, so I had to backtrack, and my boat was hauled out very, very briefly, and, and the trouble was discovered very quickly, and I had picked up a crab pot on my anchor, and all, all was well. I didn't, didn't need a week of repairs on the propeller, so I was put back in the water, and my friends were there in a little rubber dinghy, and they said, let's go somewhere today. So I hadn't planned on going anywhere today, except backwards. Uh, but they inspired me to go forwards, and it's kind of late in the day. Um, but we had had good tides for getting through a shallow place, and we're going to arrive before sunset. Nice, yeah, this is a nice view. Uh, I, my long-term viewers will recognize most of the spots I scope from, and this is not one because there's nothing to show you, except right now I have someone to show you. Now I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to go check my course. Bear with me. Yeah, I'm off course. Uh, the other nice thing, I'll let you look out the side while I change my course. Another nice thing, because we went through the shallow place at high tide, it's still mostly uh, very close to high tide. And going through here at low tide requires a lot more attention than it does right now at, at high tide. So I have a turn coming up in about three minutes and go back to the, the stern. Sit here for just a second, or two. This is just lots and lots of marsh. You can see there's nothing to look at, except for my buddies. Are you barefoot? No, I'm not barefoot. There's a little bit of a, a sea breeze. And it's almost time. I was pretty hot earlier. Um, if I have to stand up all day, I certainly would rather have my sneakers on than go barefoot. Ahoy! Ahoy! Keel hauling! What a great name! Alright, so I've got to go zoom out again. This is the trouble with this, this narrow section. You have a view to the, the other side. I'm coming up on a turn in a, about two minutes. This is why I normally don't scope this area, because this marsh. So it is pretty. What body of water? This is the Intracoastal, Intracoastal Waterway in South Carolina near Charleston. My friends, have, we're from the, uh, the same part of the, uh, the state of Massachusetts. We both keep our boat in the same place. And they finally decided to go south. All their, all their children were done having, having babies for a little while, so no excuse, and they're going south for the first time. Normally boats uh, don't, don't stick together. One boat stops and does something, or the other boat goes ahead, um, which they did. They, they did an overnight and caught up to me. And we've been going more or less at the same speed, but not always to the same spot. And what happens tomorrow is, might be a little different. I've got to turn around and face forward. You can look at the, uh, how far are they going? We're going to be in the same place tonight. That's, that's agreed upon. They're going to the Bahamas though. And I, I definitely am not going to the Bahamas. That, that is too far for, uh, for what I like to do. What kind of a view do you want? So they'll go to the Bahamas. What they won't do though, is they will not bring their boat back all the way up to Massachusetts because that's a very long trip and they'll probably bring it up to the very very southern end of Georgia and leave it on shore during the summer while we'll they go off and, uh, and do other things. What are we sailing? This is, well, what I'm in and what my buddies are in, the same boat. It's a Pacific Seacraft 34. Theirs is white, mine's blue, and oddly enough, they have a, a slightly weaker motor, but they're just 
sometimes just a tad faster. So I don't quite understand that, but someone has to be a little faster. I'd like to know uh, what the difference is. It's a, it's a minuscule difference. Um, I do have more, more stuff sticking up and, and um, you're being in the Bahamas in February, yes, I know. So my boat has more windage, it has, it has more of a dodger and, and a dinghy on deck and, and that might account for, for some of the difference. I have to make a fairly sharp turn here. And I'm very happy this is all being done when the water's high. It's uh, a little nerve-wracking otherwise. Yep, Karen's going on a big journey. She's going to be at sea in a cruise ship. There was 10 degrees of left turn and another 10 degrees. And here's my, uh, my plastic. So I'm shooting through this, this plastic uh, screen. It helps break the wind so I don't get a blast of wind in my face the whole time. A little bit of course change. All right, we can look back for a second. There they are again. I'm not going to walk back. Uh, one, one big difference between the two of us is I'm on the autopilot almost the entire time. And their autopilot's a different uh, design and it's uh, right where you sit, where the mechanism is. And every time it it steers the boat, you hear it. So they don't like the noise. How am I doing with this buoy? A little bit to the left. I'll show you out the other side. We'll go past it in a second. You know, I normally don't like shooting into the sun. So they don't, they don't use their autopilot as much as I do because they don't like the noise. And that means they have to steer by hand. But there's two of them. So they can shift, split the duty. I think I'd just get tired if I had to steer by hand, even even half a day. It's uh, it's work. But they also have each other to, to talk to, so that that probably helps pass some time. They say, why am I shooting into the sun? Well, we're coming up to this this red buoy. How many in the crew? There's one on my boat and two on the boat behind me. But one thing I'm not sure about is if I'm invited to dinner or not. I, I have a little gift package to give them. One thing I picked up, there was a handout at the Dismal Swamp Canal. And the other thing is, is some uh, items I got when I stayed at a marina the other night. They give out a welcome package. There's the buoy of interest, number 84. I'm going to be turning between numbers 97 and 99. So there they are, plugging along. Uh, so I, you two are chatting it up. Uh, let's see, how am I doing? They had to sl slow down just a bit, they were catching up to me. And they wanted, for whatever reason, I don't mind going first, but they wanted me to go first. Check my course, and I'm off course. One, two... No, I'm not going to cut this buoy too close. Three, because I know it's shallow over there. Probably still cutting it a little bit too closely. But it's high time. Karen, were you planning to scope from the Bahamas or from the cruise ship? You would, uh, you would have some, 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 if you could scope from the cruise ship, that might be interesting to people. What am I doing? I am motoring along in my sailboat. And I'm almost done. You can see what's good. You can see the sun is, is getting very low. Sun sets fairly soon. It is, it is beautiful out here. I'm looking up ahead, I have to make another turn in a second. And then we're almost there. So, oh, there's my shower, shower alarm went off. 
just as I expected. So I know this area. I, should, I shouldn't be cutting this corner, but I can. This, can you hear the engine? It is a loud engine. I'm on my, I think I'm on my microphone. Where is, where it is from? I'm not sure what that means. Hey, guess what we saw today? I also saw one the other day, uh, which I've never seen around here before, was an alligator swimming. That was pretty cool. All right, time to make a little course change. About 30 degrees, probably. I'm just pushing the button on the autopilot, asking for 10 degrees at a time. Let it swing. Ask for another 10. Then I look up, see how we're doing. Almost there. One, two, three, four, five. Keep an eye on the depth. I think I'm good for a minute. It's very hard to. Uh, this is this is what I'm trying to see. I'm trying to find the buoy in the in the glare of the sun. Not easy to do. But it's high tide, so. Less of an issue. There are my friends creeping along. I think they've crept up a little bit. Going over a deep spot. We're both ready to be stopped. It's been a long day for me. Not so much for them. What's my speed? 6.1. Three miles to go, so that's 30 minutes. Where's that buoy? I've lost it in the sun. One, two, three. So now they've veered off, I'm not sure why. Maybe they see something that I don't. I think I'll veer off a little bit too. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna scope out. What can I scope out on? We'll go up to a we'll go up to a house. How about that? Oddly enough, there is a there are some houses here on, uh, on a very tiny island. You can only get to it by boat. And they've built them so that if there's a hurricane, everything's fine. At least that's the theory. I don't know if it's been tested or not. Oh, let's see. There's, there's a buoy right in the sun. So I think I'm good for a few minutes on this course. 6.1 knots, three miles to go, so that's half an hour. Easy math for everybody. Now we could have, uh, there were, I had an alternate stopping point. I wonder if it was right. No, the, the alternate stopping point is, is still up ahead. Where we just went past, I, I don't know if you can go in there or not. Boats go in there and tie up. I don't know if there's much room to anchor. So, I'm going to a place I've been to before. It's three miles away. Another place I've not been to before is one mile away, but the day is still young, so might as well keep going. Hello, Dennis. I'm showing you the back view, but at the same time, I'm swiveling my head to look forwards and adjust my course. Has been, my, my friends have gotten to see me all day. I can't see them too well. They're sitting back there. So let's see, is the house coming up? Uh, yes, it's not here yet. But another, uh, another five minutes and then I'll probably be finished. Another 20 minutes and it'll be time to be uh, getting ready to arrive. My, uh, my anchor is, is, used, is put up and down with an electric motor and most boats you go up to the front of the boat and you put your foot on a, on a on a button on the deck and it runs the motor but no such luck for me I have to take a, a, a handheld control and plug the stupid thing in which is a little awkward and in my fear is if I ever lose it then that's a, that's a big problem Still looking good, going straight. 
and we're coming up on the house 2.8 miles to go not quite in a straight line but straight enough and it was, we slowed down a little bit so the tide's turned and starting to run out and there's a whole pile of, uh, of connections to the ocean so the tide runs various directions as you move along. So here, here we are at this little uh, little chalet house. We'll scope out on this as I go past it. It's slightly better uh, lighting, lighting as I get past. So there is a dock here and a long walk, walkway over the marsh. Uh, one thing that, that's not obvious is, is when, you, when you have to do number one or two, where does it go? What do you think? Use your imagination. I don't think they have an outhouse. So everybody, I'm going to scope out. Thanks for keeping me company for a few minutes. And we'll catch you next time.